this conversation before the top of the hour, but it was a bit difficult. The Justice for Miners campaign says they're concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on the compensation payments due to gold miners for silicosis and TB in terms of the 5 billion rand settlement to be executed by the Tiamiso Trust. These concerns are particularly pertinent given the growing COVID-19 fatalities amongst miners. The Justice for Miners campaign was launched to advocate for the payment of just compensation for miners who fell sick as a result of working in a hazardous working environment. Bishop Joe Sioka is the chairperson uh, for Justice for Minus for the campaign. Uh, a very good welcome to you once again, Bishop. Uh, we apologize to have this conversation with you on a Sunday. You, you, have you done your, <laughs> your bishoply duties already yeah, for the day? Yes, I'm done and I'm free now. Awesome. Now, this conversation brings up an important aspect uh, that has up to now only been held in terms of health workers and not other sectors. Are you able to give us a picture of the impact of COVID-19 in the mining sector? Well, we are aware that um, in the mining sector, though it's not spoken about, there is quite a number of people who have been infected. Some have died. The numbers may not be as high as in the frontline workers like doctors and nurses, but the truth of the matter is that it is happening there also. Thus, we as a campaign are aware and very anxious that Tiamiso speed up the payment of the five billion that has been set aside for those who in the past have suffered uh, TB and silicosis and are due to be uh, compensated. Um, we are aware that um, Tiamiso has initiated um, a, a pilot phrase as of um, the 26th of June to set up the claimants and to receive these uh, compensation. But we want to assist them, identify people, educate people, so that people know exactly what needs to be done at this time because minors are most vulnerable uh, due to their um, lung diseases and if they do die we want them to um, find a way of getting uh, uh, um, their lungs tested uh, so that they could be compensated if not them having died then at least their families in fact, somebody on social media... so we, we, we are concerned that um, ex-miners um, are being asked to send text messages, uh, but we know that it's very difficult for these people in rural communities in particular. And so we don't believe that it is possible for them to uh, do these things themselves and they need to be facilitated. And therefore, we're asking Tiamiso, for instance, to start public campaigns, educate mortuaries, uh, surgeons, um, but also to ensure that there are facilities in the sending areas where these men and women can go and be assisted with their claims. Your campaign wants to support the work of Tiamiso Trust in fulfilling the mandate to pay 500,000 ex-gold miners in southern Africa. Uh, one, what sort of database do you have? How will you get to all of these miners? And also to the assertion that uh, the fight against COVID-19 could impact on the payments. Why do you feel that uh, um, there's a choice between one or the other? Well, look, uh, the numbers are huge. It, this has happened over uh, a decade. But it is possible, it is doable. We do not believe that COVID-19 should be a, an obstacle. There could be offices opened um, with access scanners, internet facilities, telephones, where these miners could be assisted. There is a lot of information, either in the mining uh, uh, mines houses themselves or in what is called TABA, and those uh, uh, institutions can, if asked, have an obligation to provide the information that will assist with the compensation. Reverend, just in terms of perspective, let's take our viewers back to 
when uh, the courts decided that these payouts could be made and how far is this process? Well, look, it took 12 years really to reach the, the, um, the out-of-court settlement between the mining companies and the claimants. Now, the process is with Tiamiso, a trust that has been set aside to help facilitate uh, the uh, payments. As I said, that uh, Tiamiso has, as of June, um, initiated a pilot uh, phase where they will be trying to identify uh, some of these uh, uh, affected uh, miners. The problem, though, is that COVID-19 makes it difficult for them to have their lungs tested. And we are saying that there should be a way of um, us helping these people without necessarily depending on uh, um, my uh, uh, lungs have been tested because we know that the infection is already there with them. Who are you making the call to? Is it to government? Is it to Tiamiso? Or is it to the dispensing agencies? We're making a direct call to Tiamiso because they've been entrusted with the responsibility to help these ex-miners who have suffered uh, tuberculosis and silicosis. And they have an obligation to ensure that these people are compensated. If not them, their families, because some of them would have died. But we are also aware that because they are the most vulnerable um, people, uh, we need to speed up the process of payments so that it is done before they fall um, victims of COVID-19. Of course, these miners, these ex-miners are not only in South Africa, they're all over Southern Africa. Uh, how do you hope yes, to, we, to reach all of them? We have chapters in, in Eswatini, in Malawi, um, in um, Mozambique, Lesotho, all those sending areas outside Africa, South Africa. Uh, those are the people who are on the ground known to the ex-miners and who know where to find the ex-miners also. And we can then, using our experience with them, uh, reach out to them and link them up with Siamiso so that they can get compensation also. So it is doable. It's not something that cannot be done. We're aware of the challenges. For instance, that ex-miners are illiterate in the first instance. Secondly, they don't have uh, telecommunications or photocopies, um, things that would um, uh, assist Yamiso to know and to trace where they are and provide for them as uh, being asked. We strongly believe that the trust must come to the miners and, and not expect miners to go to them because they are already um, sick, most of them. If you have to make a public call in order to uh, cooperate or coordinate with Siamiso, does it then uh, perhaps mean that they are not open to your overtures? No, they are open to it. Um, in fact, we are seeking um, ways of uh, working uh, together with them. We already had a meeting where we had put uh, some questions before them for consideration. I cannot disclose that because it's a matter that is being attended to. But there is openness um, to uh, cooperate. And we are now in the process of setting up another meeting where we're going to say, look, these uh, are doables, and these are challenges, and these are the difficulties. How can we collectively engage um, so that we can assist with the compensations of these people? How then would you like the public to engage with this process? The public could, can help by identifying these people and encouraging people to register as it is asked of them, to, uh, to have their lungs tested, for instance, um, to um, check themselves in 
to engage with the institutions available that will help them to access Tiamiso and also Tiamiso to be able to help them with their needs. Now, we are told, for instance, that some district sergeants charge people even for having to examine them and uh, to, to have them their lungs tested. Now, that should not be allowed because money has been set aside uh, for, 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 for these processes to take place. And so the public can actually say, you know, my dad, my uncle, my um, nephew uh, worked in the mines at this period. He got sick and was certified to suffer from uh, TB and celiacosis. And we believe that he qualifies for the comp compensation and then put a claim through. Bishop Sioka, uh, we might be speaking to you generally at the moment about minors, but uh, one of the uh, foremost events in the country that you were inadvertently a face of, and as we, in July this time, we're facing August, the 16th of August 2012, the, what has been termed the Marikana Massacre. What's the latest there in terms of payments? Well, it is not clear what is actually happening there. There are many stories from the ground, um, also attributed to the um, um, problem of uh, COVID-19. You know, the mines were closed and when coming back, we're told that they're being uh, forced to signing forms um, that actually makes them redundant. And we're trying to investigate the facts behind that, but we are aware that the, the issues that people uh, fought and died for, not all of them have been addressed. Uh, people are still not earning what they had uh, fought and uh, died for, which is 12,500 uh, rands. And so um, even though uh, Lonmin is no longer there, but um, uh, Sibanya still water has not really uh, fulfilled the promises as we're told when we engage with Lonmin that these are the things that are being addressed. And how are you engaging with those processes and putting them, uh, combining them with your work with Justice for Minors? Well, we, we, we're trying to find a way of saying to, to the minors, look, you have responsibilities. You have to uh, see to it that what the minors are asking for is real and it's doable. You have to um, be careful that history does not repeat itself, that we are now heading for um, 10 years um, after the massacre, and the chances are that people are going to stand up again and say, listen, our comrades died. We have not uh, been rewarded for what we uh, fought for. And we are saying that uh, things should be done on the ground that involves not only the miners, but also the communities around the mining um, houses, because they are also affected. We know, for instance, that in Kaneng, the infrastructure has not been developed to the satisfaction of the people. We know that um, the mines are using a lot of water and therefore depriving people of water resources. We know for a fact that the housing um, that is required has not been provided for. As many of the miners continue to live, live in the shacks around the, uh, the mining communities. So are you able to tell us uh, in the lead up to August if Justice for Miners has any activations planned uh, in, in terms of remembering this event? Not necessarily um, with the Marikana issue, but with all miners, particularly those that are part of our work uh, in, in the sending areas, who we are aware of, who are um, having a TB and are being um, owed money by the mine for compensation. And we are hoping that we'll have a campaign to highlight the difficulties and the challenges that are faced by these people. Yeah. And asking to assist with uh, whatever need that is particularly developing a database so that the Tiamiso Trust can access this database and reach out to the people and help them 
with their needs. Your efforts are mainly directed at ex-miners. How are you engaging with current miners and how uh, different are their challenges to those of uh, 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 miners in the past? Well, you know, uh, the mining houses will tell you that they have uh, done a lot of improvement, that there are a lot of uh, protective measures uh, in place. And so we are dealing with the ones that have had a settlement um, uh, in 2018, uh, people that are already sick, and some of them, as I said, are already dead, so that we can help the widows, the orphans, um, to access what is due uh, to them. With the current miners, we are also highlighting the importance of having their lungs tested, and should they die, to have those uh, um, octopusy also um, done so that their families do not lose out. So it's an education process. Yeah, it's it's important. Uh, for people to know their rights. Because historically, when the minor is sick and has been uh, diagnosed with uh, TB, he will be sent home, literally to go and die, with no uh, repose, no compensation. And we want that to stop. So that if, if people give their lives for the wealth of this country, to build the economy of this country, at least there should be benefit for that. Dr. Sioka, are you uh, engaging at all with uh, the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy? And uh, how, what's the character of those uh, engagements? No, 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 we haven't really gone that far. Because we're just trying to target people who are directly affected, people who, are, who quali we believe qualify. Uh, for compensation. And, and the, the, the government um, responsibility has been put on the shoulders of the Amiso Trust. Okay. And those are the people that we want to work with. Well, let's thank you at this point for talking to us this morning, uh, Bishop Joe Sioka, the chairperson for Justice for Minors. We hope we'll be watching to see how uh, your, your activations progress and if you're successful in your quest. Thanks for talking to us. Thank, thank you for having us. And I think it's important for this message to go to the public. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bishop uh, Josioka.